Oh, wow. This is incredible. We're going to open up this box and we're going to go through some very old and very special tools. If you just want to see the tools, go ahead and skip forward. But here's a little background. Now, my grandfather died in 59. I never got to meet him. So most of the details that I'm going to share with you I actually got from this book that my great aunt wrote and it's titled 10 Decades in the Life of My Dad. Now the book is all about yeah. my great grandfather, uh, Lincoln. Uh, but, of course, since he had a son, Simon, a lot of what I know about Simon, my grandfather, is from this book. Wow. Now, Simon was born in 32 in Canada, and my grandfather, Simon, used to work for him on weekends and uh, holidays uh, while he was going through school. And then at the age of 18, he would, uh, finished school, worked full-time for my great-grandfather. Uh, and after a few years became partners. In 1957 there was a recession. Uh, so in 1957 with a young family and kids uh, including my dad, my grandfather moved to Buffalo, New York. So he was an immigrant to the United States. Uh, and a lot of these tools then, um, I think some of these were from Canada and I'm, I'm excited about that as part of the heritage. Uh, some of the tools I'm told that are inside here are after that, but most of them are from Simon. Uh, so, so most of these tools are going to be pre-1959. What I find interesting is that I never knew that my uh, family history had any construction uh, background to it until after I built my home. Uh, and then my Aunt Marion said, you're just like your grandfather and your great-grandfather. And I'm like, what do you mean? So that, that was really neat when, um, when I found that out. And I'm very excited and really thank you so much, Grandma, for sending me these and to my uncles who allowed me to have these uh, as well. Uh, and my father, uh, whom any of them could have uh, asked for the tools prior to uh, me uh, getting in line. Uh, but they were, they were gracious enough to allow me to have them. First item we have is a framing square. So this is a Stanley number 5000 US. Some of the potential stress out of this. I might open it up. Yep, there we go. All right, great. What do we have? So we have a metal folding rule, and the Lufkin Rule Company, Sagna, Michigan, made in USA. Looks like we have a few hand saws. So this one says USA on it. I think that says Dizton on it. And it's interesting, there's a curve here. Uh, I really hope that you guys uh, help me out in the comments as to what these are. Let's look at the next one here. Looks like the same company, but this has a straight back to it. This one looks like they probably have used it a little bit more recently. <laughs> Cross cut. This is Craftsman. And so this one 
Looks like Bell Hinnap. We have another one here. This one says, Disson, Canada. Awesome. So this is one that he would have brought with him. It looks like we have a Stanley block plane. And this one actually says made in Canada in it. Uh, Bailey. What's up, sweetie? This is a Stanley number five. All right, so we have a piece of a uh, combination square. It's a it's a square drive, but it's when they it actually says Robertson on it. That's funny. Eleanor's down for her nap, so it's just going to be me for the rest of the video. Uh, it looks like we have a set of. Uh, hand-operated drills. You know, I've never seen this before. We have a mystery piece. Some more of these drills. This kind of looks like that thing they had in uh, Blues Brothers. <laughs> this is called Yankee, number 131A. Oh, come on, yeah. Oh, a little draw knife. Would you look at that? Does anyone know what these are for? I have no idea. Can I get this out now? Yes. Is that how it works? Never used one of these. Let's see. Getting in there, but it takes a while. It says Stanley on it. Made in Canada. We have these two rods that look like they can extend. And it looks like there's a, a small point. And then if I tighten this, yeah, so that stays stationary. And I flip it around and the same thing. So it could be that it's meant as a scribe. Oh, it looks like we have another plane. Oh, but bent up blade. And of course we have the box itself that my grandfather made. It'd be nice to be able to ask, you know, he probably made every dimension based on exactly what he wanted to place in here and uh, it'd be nice to know where where everything kind of went in his mind well here's the toolbox it's lid which is hinged and it looks like a piece of cloth there would open and this was beveled we beveled both sides and grinded down the uh, the screws. And this is just a piece of wire that uh, he went and tied a knot on and made a, a handle right there for it. And he, he carved in a couple of spots here. You see the dados coming in at an angle. So he has two slots. You can imagine those might have been for drill bits maybe. And then he's got the space down below. Uh, and then we have a longer 
section up here and a hidden tray down underneath there. I'm not sure what he would slip into that spot. Let's see if that kind of... Yep, so it looks like the Stanley could fit right in there uh, in the middle. I don't know if that's where my grandfather used to keep that or not, but it fits in. It seems like a tough spot to get it in and out of. I look forward to sharpening this and cleaning it up. This is all really cool for me. Uh, you know, knowing that these tools were my grandfather's and uh, he built homes using these tools. Uh, I would have loved to, to learn with them. So I, I'm going to, uh, you know, in my spare time, I'm going to be cleaning these up a little bit. And uh, you might see me pull them out for a video here and there. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.